What's up, B Squad? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Ready to Love, you guys. Season 6, episode number 4. The episode is titled Miami White Party, you guys. So, before we jump into this review, let's go ahead. If, nope, I'm doing this all backwards. Before we jump into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on my channel and you guys are not yet subscribed, then I need you guys to do me that solid favor and please stop checking me out in this day and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know you can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning on your post notifications, and also by sharing the video, you guys. And with that out the way, without further ado, let's discuss Ready to Love, shall we? All right, all right, all right. So this week, the latest, they are going to be sending one of these gentlemen home this week. So we see all the ladies and they make it to the ladies lounge. Oh, let's welcome Luna. This is her first time in the ladies lounge. So we get that out of the way, right? Let me be honest with you guys. I'm overrated. I'm really overrated to love already. And we are only four episodes in. So Tommy is telling the ladies, you know, that they need to basically talk about them. You know, they want to be a pair instead of being single. With this batch of men, I'd rather be single or a lesbian. If I was one of these women, I'd rather be single or a lesbian. One of the two. Don't matter which one it would be. Even if I wasn't attracted to women, if I was a lady, one of the ladies. But we, we would we would connect on we would be bosom buddies. We would be we would be we would be good girlfriends. We would be we would braid each other's hair. We would go we would take each other on dates. We would be best friends. Like the men, they're, they're, they're trash. Minus a few. But even some of the ones that I said that I've liked previously in this episode, one in particular, I looked at him a lot differently and it was like, oh, sir, no, you are a red flag for me. I hate when people make this statement. We're going to talk about it when we get to it. So Tommy tells the ladies that he will be throwing an epic Miami white party. So he wants the ladies to, you know, buckle down with the men that you, you already have a connection with and also try to get to know somebody else in this process. Well, Tommy, that would be a little bit easy if the men pursue the women, but that never happens. That very rarely happens in Ready to Love where the man will pursue the woman. But hey, it is what it is. So the first date we see is Randall and Kayla. Ugh. You guys know how I feel about the sexual innuendos. You guys know that I hate the sexual innuendos. And when he fed Kayla, oh, it's so thick. Oh, it's so big. Oh, it's so juicy. I was just like, girl, why do we have to do the sexual? Like, why do we have to do that? Like, it's one thing to say, oh, this is a thick piece of, you know, you don't even have to say thick piece of meat. You can say a thick piece of steak. It doesn't have to be like, why do we have to do the sexual innuendos? I fucking hate them. So then he asks her, how is she in a relationship? So she tells him that in a relationship, she likes to do the fun stuff as well as romantic. So she likes it to be an even mix. So then, you know, she asks him about his family. He tells her about his family. He also tells her that he does want to have kids, but he wants to have fun with his partner first. I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I, I, I am. So then we see Justice and Mama D. They on a date. This is where... I was done with the episode <laughs> with Justice and Mama D. First of all, with Mama D, her wig, it's not, a, 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 it is a little ugly, but what bothers me with Mama D's wig is the slick down sideburns. It's like, damn, them motherfuckers are slick down. So you guys know how Justice is. Justice doesn't feel like he should, you know, basically he doesn't want to court a woman. He just wants to do free shit with a woman. He wants to like go to the beach with a woman that's free. He wants to go to, you know, the park with the woman. That's free. But he doesn't even want to talk to the woman on the phone. So how are you getting to know somebody? How do you know if you like a person if you don't want to, if you don't want to talk to them on the phone, but you want to, you'll go, you'll do. Now, see, here's the thing with me. We don't, I, I'm cool if you don't want, I'm cool if you say, hey, one night we can order in, we can, you know, we can order in and have a movie date or something like that. I'm cool with that, but I would also say, can we go to a restaurant? Can we go to a movie? Can we go to a restaurant? Can we do something fun and get to know each other? He doesn't want to do that. 
is giving El Cheapo. And justice would be a fuck no for me. Because when he was talking to Mama D in that scene, I'm like, girl, you are better than me. Because I would have grabbed my purse and said, you know what, Justice? It's been nice knowing you. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and dip out. Like what's, like that, meme, that SpongeBob meme, I'm going to go ahead and head out on this one. Because who the fuck does Justice think he is? Like, you, Because if you listen to Justice talk, Justice wants a woman to chase after him. Sir. No. Like, Justice must think he is just like the, the finest thing walking to want a woman to pursue him. Okay. Let's pause here, guys, and move forward. All right, you guys, so they're going to be having an all-day event, right? And after that, they're going to have a white party. I was like, so So they brought their clothes. I'm like, I hope y'all take a shower before y'all go to this, you know, to the white party. Because that's all I kept thinking about was like, are y'all taking a shower before... Y'all gonna go to in, in the, y'all gonna take turns going to the shower in this house and before you put your new, you, you're gonna be sweaty and musty. So all you're gonna do is just be putting clothes on over must and sweat and then just throw some deodorant on and some perfume and some cologne. Okay, I, I'm, I, I'm 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 gonna let it go. So Tommy and his wife meet Miss meet Jacqueline Miles. We, you know, I, we gonna show you how to get the ring. We've been together for 21 years. Say what? <laughs> Tommy, who the fuck you, who, who do you think you're playing with, Tommy? I'm, I'm, I, I really want to know who Tommy would think he's fooling. Because I had to go and do a little bit of a Google search on nephew Tommy and Miss Jacqueline Miles. They got married in 2016. 2016 y'all ain't even been married a decade yet so <laughs> i mean some is some people are okay with it because if i'm not mistaken i remember their their story is that they didn't get married while he was pursuing his you know his, his career as a comedian she's she's been the oh, She's been there 21 years, but y'all ain't been married for 21 years. Y'all have been only been, I mean, yeah. Y'all ain't even been married a decade, so. Ugh. Tommy, 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 Tommy. Let's stop playing like you weren't the biggest, like you weren't a fuckboy, just like some of these men are. Let's stop playing that game, Tommy. Like, because I was, when he said 21 years, I'm like, they have not been married for 21 years. Like, they haven't. Because I'm like, I've been listening to, because I listened to the Steve Harvey radio show for years and never did they mention that that man was married before. Because actually, keep it real with you guys, when I used to listen to the nephew, Tom, when I used to listen to Steve Harvey show and with nephew Tommy on there, I always thought the man was single, the way he would talk. I never heard him talk about his, his I never heard him talk about her like that. So, yeah, Tommy, who are you fooling? And also, Tommy, you're not hot. You're not. You're not hot in that that long sleeve ass shirt. And then number two with that long sleeve ass shirt, it was a little bit snug. Cause I, I'm like your stomach, like it's 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 screaming, free me. Just saying. She guys, I try to be nice. I I I I know I'm always shady, but the wigs, you guys, the wigs, the wigs, the wigs. I don't know what the hell is going on with these wigs. Cause we, I'm gonna go back to um old girl Kayla, her interview look, her new interview look that she has. The wig is the wig itself wasn't like 100% bad. The only thing was was at the top right here, she needed she just needed to be plucked out a little bit more. Cause I was like, girl, that wig is just not the look. And then her makeup on top of that, her makeup like that makeup that Kayla wears, it's not your color. It it looks greenish to me it looks like it's green it looks like um a trophy like you know like the gold on a trophy that ain't your color just letting you know that right now so mama d and randall you guys know randall has a connection with trinica mama d and with kayla so kayla is watching so mama d and randall they hug and you got you can see kayla over there with the proverbial side eye i'm like girl it ain't that deep that is part of the process now, if I'm going to be honest about Randall, I don't believe Randall is doing it 
for the right. I don't think Randall is doing it in a sense of let me make multiple connections. I feel like Randall, like, I, like I've been saying it all season, like I say every season, Ready to Love is literally just a numbers game. When we, when we boil it down, it's a numbers game. So I feel like what Randall is doing is trying to make more connections. And I don't think, I don't necessarily know if there are meaningful connections because that connection with Kayla, I don't believe that, that is a meaningful connection. And I don't believe that the connection with Mama D is that meaningful either. I feel like, <clears throat> I do feel like when it comes to Trinika, that's a meaningful connection that he has. But Mama D and Kayla, I don't see it. I don't see it. I feel like it's a connection of let me get some numbers on my side so that way when the ladies are in deliberation that my name will come up for more women that like me than women that don't have a connection with me and mind you guys this is a week the week for the women to send the men home and we see this every season where when it's the women's week to send one of the men home the men <clears throat> we, we we start to find out about these these connections that the men have that we didn't necessarily see and I know that with Ready to Love, they don't show us everything on the show that they sometimes put it on their YouTube channel. I know that the people do have communications with each other off screen that we are not privy to, right? But we got to keep, we, I'm also being real and honest when it comes to the men. We do see this more times than not that on a woman, on the women's week to choose who goes home, the men will, will see, well, like I just said a few minutes ago, we'll see them with more and more connections. That's why I say I don't believe these two connections with Mama D and Kayla are real with Randall. I think Randall's true connection is with Trinika. But Trink, this is directed to you. Me and you. This is me talking to you directly. I'm talking to you. Find another connection, my love. <clears throat> That's all I want for you to do is find another connection. We tweeted last night, but if you're watching this video, find another one. And not LJ. Well, maybe LJ. Just don't let him sing to you. Don't let him sing. All right, you guys. So, let's pause here. Nope, let's keep going. So, the ladies. I don't like, like, I, even though this is the ladies week and the men, you would think that the men would be pursuing, well, throughout the whole entire process. You would think that the men would actually be showing, would be pursuing the women that they're interested in, but that's not the case. Like you guys know, Sharice is not my favorite person. But even with Sharice, Sharice had to go approach Zoe to have a conversation with him. I'm like, absolutely not. I would not have approached Zoe. This is your week to send one of the men home. Let If Zoe likes Sharice, let Zoe come to Sharice, right? Let Zoe come to you. Because, I mean, look at, look at last week's episode. Samson. Samson didn't have a connection with Sharice at all, but he was intentional about having a date with Sharice. I like that. I want. I, I wish that. I wish that the men would be more. Would if you, I mean, uh, it's like the men feel like they are catching. That's kind of something that just said he's a catch, sir. What? Go to hell. So Sharice is asking Zoe about himself, and he says she asked him, "Has he ever been married?" Right? He says, "No, he's never been married, but he was in a relationship with a woman, and you know, she told him that she wanted to get married." So. He went out and bought a ring. She was like, that kind of scares me. <sighs> yes, that is scary that he went and bought a ring because the woman said she wants to get married. But Sharice, you ain't said shit about Devin not owning his child. That wasn't scary either. Okay, girl, I guess. So then he says to her, the next morning, he asked that woman for the ring back. That's not how that works. Because if you break off the engagement, that ring was hers. Because you ended the engagement, not her. I'm going to take you couldn't afford that ring. <clears throat> I'm going to take it he couldn't afford that ring. All right, you guys, so I want to pause here and we'll, I want to move forward. All right, you guys, so next up we see Sharice. So Sharice is talking to Mike and she's telling Mike that, Mike, that he hurt her feelings, right? So... I tweeted this last night, and I, I'm gonna repeat it again for you guys. If you guys don't see my didn't see my tweet, I want to say this. So, number one, Mike and Sharice both owe each other an apology. She owes him an apology for calling his kids baggage. I'm not laughing about her calling them baggage. I'm just laughing that she really said baggage to that man about his kids. 
bold. Man, he owes her an apology for what he said to her. I know he probably didn't mean it. In a, I know he probably didn't mean it to come off. Like, I think what he was doing was, you hurt me, I hurt back. But both of them owe each other an apology. And I don't want people to come down on Sharice, right? Sharice is not my favorite person, but don't come, we can't come down on Sharice, right? Because Sharice has a preference. She doesn't want a man with kids. At the At the age of 43... Like I said last week, it's going to be difficult for Sharice to find a man that's never been either married or doesn't have kids, especially in that age range. It's just going to be a little bit impossible. It's not, I'm not saying that it can't happen, but the pop, the probability of that happening is very, very slim. <clears throat> but that's her preference, and we can't not. I can't knock Sharice for having a preference of not wanting to have a man, not wanting to be with a man that has kids. I don't have an issue with that. I just have an issue with her saying baggage. That was the only problem that I had with Sharice was the problem, this, the fact that she said baggage. Had she chosen a different, a, had she used her words better, I wouldn't have had an issue with it. I'm like, hey, that's her, that's her personal beliefs. Who am I to judge, right? So he gave, so he apologized to her, but it's one of those, if I said this, if I did this, if I did that apologies. It's not if. Because she's told you, you hurt her feelings. So you say, Sharice, I did not intend to hurt your feelings. And for that, I 100% apologize. That's all you got to say. He couldn't say that. So, like I said, so, so Trinika, I guess Trinika does have a new connection in LJ. Now, Trinika, <laughs> you said, be honest with you. <sighs> <laughs> that song that you made up take the panties take the panties oh my god I cringed I cringed when I heard that I was like oh not take the panties mm -mm, we don't do that I, I don't want I don't want that for you I don't want that don't subject yourself to just panties take my heart you know take my Take something, but not the panties. Not the panties. Definitely not LJ. Well, well, definitely don't let him take the panties if he sings to you. Run. But yeah, I just didn't like. I, I just didn't like to take the panties. I, I thought that was a little. I, I just didn't. I, I don't. I. I was gonna say I'm a little prudish, but I'm not prudish. I just don't like. Uh, I guess for me. Well, like I said, I don't like sexual. I don't like sexual innuendos. I really don't. I don't like them. Well, let me take that back. I'm cool with sexual innuendos, right? I'm cool with sexual innuendos, but I don't like them if we're in the process of getting to know each other. That's it. If we're in the process of getting to know each other, please keep all the sexual innuendos. I don't like them because I will ignore them. Like I literally will. People, I, I have so many people, you know, especially when you say things and, oh, that's what she said. That's what she said. Oh, it's so big and stuff like that. When people do that stuff to me, I'm like, I don't, I, I pay it dust. I pay it dust. I really do. It's just something about it. Like, I, I'm a very sexual person. Ugh, spitting, sorry, you guys. Very sexual person, but I just don't do sexual innuendos when we get, where we're in the beginning phases of getting to know each other. I don't do it, never have, never will. Moving on. Um. So we see, we saw Mama D, we saw Shakira, and we saw Katie, right? So they were talking to Mike about Sharice, and then while they were talking, Shakira decided she wanted to get up from the table and excuse herself because she doesn't want to be in, around that kind of conversation. I was like, huh? So then, uh, now, she got upset with Kadian, right? But Kadian really didn't put your business out there. She, all she said was, that's uncomfortable for Shakira because of her situation. She didn't say what your situation was, so for you to get upset with Kadian, she didn't really say what happened. I don't want to know. I don't, honestly, you don't have to say what happened. But I will say, it doesn't feel like you healed yourself from whatever you're, past issues are i'm kind of leaning toward the side that 
she may have been in an abusive relationship and if she was then my heart goes out to her i don't know what that's like to be in a, an abusive relationship so my heart goes out to her if that is the situation but i will also like i just said a minute ago i also don't believe that she has completely healed from that situation but let's pause here you guys let's i'm gonna wrap up the episode you guys all right you guys so kayla kayla is a h-a-t-e-r hater so she had a conversation with randall right she was like oh i saw mama d you put your arm you, you had your hands around her waist and she had her ass on you he's like you didn't see that i'm like kayla this is a dating pro now i will say one thing about their white party they were grinding on each other and i was just like what in the hell is this this looks like an orgy waiting to happen so we see lj so lj is talking to looney he's telling looney he wants to take on a trip to mexico okay don't care kadian we see her she has a connection with swayze cool so back to shakira so shakira was having a conversation with lj and she has an issue with the fact that lj hasn't called her i was like oh my god girl last week it was Zoe not asking for your number. Now this week is the fact that he doesn't call you. You're giving me clingy. You're giving me ups. You're giving me that. You're giving me clingy vibes. You're giving me um, a little bit obsessive, needy, all of that. And I just I'm not feeling it. Now we see Jacqueline. She's talking to um, who was she talking to? Zoe and or was that? See I'm. I think that was Zoe. I think it was Zoe, and I know it was Cherise, but I think it, it, if it wasn't Zoe, it was Samson. But I think it was Zoe, and she was telling them about the her the secret to her, the relationship. I'm sorry, Miss Miles, but I wouldn't take relationship advice from you either. You know, I always say I would love to have her on so that she could be a sounding board for the women, and I I do I still do believe that I would love for her to be a sounding board for the women, but don't give me no advice. I'm sorry. If <laughs> I'm sorry, if you granted you and Tommy stuck it out until you guys got married, but I just I don't understand. Oh God, because that shows a lack of. Uh, I'm trying to think of the nicest thing to say to about that. I just look at it as. I'm not going to stand there. Like, I look at people who be engaged for eight and nine years. Why waste your time? It doesn't take eight. Uh, uh. Now, the only time I'll say it takes eight or nine years to get married. Actually, nope. I can't even say that. Because that is just a ser um, I think, And I think that's one thing a lot of people get hung up on is the ceremony of marriage and not the marriage itself. Because if you really wanted to get married, you could go down to the courthouse and easily get married so yeah i just i don't know you guys because i was gonna say you know sometimes people can't afford to get married but no that's not it baby go down to the courthouse but you know what i'm not gonna harp on that i'm gonna leave that be and we are going to just go ahead and just move forward and wrap like i said we were wrapping up so samson samson is going to be an absolute no for me talking about he wants a woman you know who has a story he wants a woman that knows what wants a woman who knows what struggle is. I was like, say what now? Huh? Struggle? Black people. Why do we oh god I hate I hate hearing that from black people. Oh god, why do we always have to live in a struggle? Why do we always have to live in a struggle? Not everybody lives the struggle life. Mom, I didn't I, I've never known a struggle ever in my I don't know what a struggle is. I know what sacrifice is. I know what is, I know I know what it is to sacrifice things. I know about sacrifice, but I don't know struggle. I ain't, I have never struggled a day in my life. I've never struggled. I you know like I said I I may have to sacrifice some things, you know, but like uh do you really need this right now? Or if, if, I, if I don't sacrifice, I am frugal. Not that frugal, but I am a little frugal. So when he said struggle, I was like, yeah, no, thank you. Moving on. 
Yeah, Shakira, this process just ain't for you, baby. I, I just don't think she's healed. So Justice had to leave, and then we see Tommy talking to the ladies, but telling him who their tops are, who, who the guys they like are, and who they are just not feeling. So the bottom three men happen to be Justice, Zoe, and LJ. And the episode ended, so we don't know who is going home until next week. Ready to love, why? That's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about that this episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below. You guys, subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notifications. Share the video, you guys. And until the next time, you guys, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, you guys. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Be blessed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.